At the very beginning of this course, I want to give a brief introduction to uh, the classic least square or the classic ordinary least square. The talk about that technique, I think it'll be very interesting to learn a little bit history of discovery or invention of least square. Uh, the closest uh, first modern precursor is probably by Galileo, why he was studying, why he was studying um, uh, orbits of celestial objects, so making some uh, astronomical uh, research and the falling objects. Um, and uh, the modern approach of least square, the technique, for uh, estimating parameters in uh, linear regression models uh, was first exposed in 1805 by the French mathematician Legendre. And then now a uh, classic memoir. Uh, at the same time, Gauss, the very prominent mathematician and uh, who is also uh, claimed as uh, uh, acclaimed as the Prince of Mathematics, published another memoir in 1809. In that, in that memoir, uh, he claimed that he first used Lee Square, okay, the technique, the main technique for uh, least, excuse me, uh, linear regression model, uh, classic linear regression model in 1795 in estimating the orbit of an asteroid. So pretty interesting. A very uh, beginning uh, of the history of uh, modern statistics uh, started with uh, research, kind of empirical research uh, in astronomy or astronomical studies. Um, well, since two person, uh, made a claim about a discovery invention of this technique. So there's a bit of a bitter anteriority dispute ensued. Okay. And uh, well, it, it's hard to say uh, who is the first one that invented this technique, but uh, a lot of people argue that. A lot of people argue that Gauss is, is so uh, famous um, and uh, he came up with a lot of sophisticated uh, techniques in mathematics. So uh, to uh, make a uh, ungrounded uh, claim over this discovery, uh, relatively speaking, considered to be minor discovery, it, you know, it's not gonna bring a lot more uh, fame uh, to him. So uh, a lot of people would agree that um, Gauss, probably is the first one who made a discovery. Um, but it's just too trivial probably uh, for him to uh, turn into a formal publication circulate, okay? Um, so it only appeared as a kind of note in his uh, 1809 memoir. And setting aside this interiority uh, uh, dispute, let me quickly talk about an early demonstration application of Lee square. Okay, this application um, uh, was related to uh, Giuseppe Biazzi, okay, an Italian mathematician and again, astronomer. And uh, he discovered Ceres, a dwarf planet uh, on January 1st, 1801. And what is Ceres? Ceres is the largest object in the asteroid belt, which lies between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So just give you a sense of location and orbit of this uh, um, celestial object. And Piazzi made 19 observations over 42 days. Then uh, Ceres was lost in glare of sun. Just, just hard to uh, kind of uh, Observe, right, with, with very, very bright light uh, emitting from the sun. Because uh, in the past, uh, astronomers, as well as other scientists, 
um, had uh, quote unquote kind of backward devices to make scientific observations right? uh, compared to what we have today. Then here, step in Gauss, okay? then 24 only. He calculated the orbit of Ceres using only three of Gyaze's observations. And uh, this Hungarian astronomer, Franz Zaver von Zak, used uh, Gauss calculation to uh, relocate Ceres. And the kind of calculation done by Gauss, technically speaking, uh, follow the lines of Lee square, the general idea about Lee square. So that is probably the first known, or shall I say, well-known application of Lee square. Okay. And to talk about a Lee square or regression in a very abstract term sometimes, uh, can be confused. So here I give you a very concrete example using a bivariate regression with least square. Okay? So here we have two variables, education, right? The variable name is EDUC, and we have a, a, a list of numbers, array of numbers, observations, 8, 10, 12, 10, 12, 15, 16, 18, and 20. And uh, these numbers uh, measure uh, the number of years, let's say, respondents have in school. Then we have another variable, income, measured in $1,000, 1K. Again, we have nine observations ranging from uh, 20K to uh, 100K, okay. and let's say the first individual a case has eight years of education in $20,000 of annual income. Second observation, the case has uh, 10 uh, years of education in $40,000 in annual income, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, here we can use uh, our function plot to plot uh, our observations in a uh, Cartesian uh, coordinate system. And then what we can do is to request R to calculate or find the regression line and uh, fit the data. So we use at line and parenthesize LM refers to linear regression and we regress income on education. Okay. And let's look down below here. We have this graph of very regression. And each dot here corresponds to a data point of an observation here. So for for example, for this one, right? This data point corresponds to the first observation, right? An individual having eight years of education and twenty thousand dollars of annual income. And for this one, right? Uh, 20 years of education and $100,000 of annual income. And this is education, this is income. So what linear regression, excuse me, uh, linear regression uh, and uh, as well as ordinary least square does is to find the best fitting line here. Okay? That produces the smallest amount of error. And later on, we'll talk about how to define that error, right? Or the total amount of error here. And, and this line here fits best of our data. Why? And later on, we will learn that because this line minimizes the sum of squared errors from the data point and uh, their corresponding uh, points on the regression line. Okay. Uh, you can change this line, kind of tweak this line to other positions with different slope, different um, kind of intercept. And uh, with careful calculation, you will find that all other lines will produce greater summed squared errors. Okay. 
So this is what we call the least square regression line. Okay? And let's move on. 